sign stands just off U.S. Highway 19, about 60 miles north of Marietta. From that point, it directs traffic down the access road to Air Force Plant 67, operated for the United States Air Force by Lockheed Georgia Division. On December 14, 1958, the Dawsonville reactor went critical. Capable of irradiating six railroad cars of material at once, this facility of the Air Force is the most extensive ever activated for the study of nuclear effects on large aircraft systems. Since the day of criticality, firm in the belief that from this Air Force research facility may well come the answers to speed the day of atomic flight. And downhill from the reactor, but separated from it by a shielding wall, the drain and hold tank also is functioning. Radioactive water from the reactor will be held in this tank until it is safe to pump it to a seepage pit back in the hills. Here, every precaution will be used to assure safe disposal. Plant protection is in charge of the firefighting equipment based at a central location in the main area. Field stations ordinarily are shared by three instruments, those for argon, neutron, and gamma detection. Electronic systems for the units are installed in an underground receptacle, an advantage to the all transistorized systems since it holds temperature variations to a minimum. Another detector in sharp outline, the 320-foot audio tower which warns of aircraft approach. Flying in the area is restricted to 5,000 feet and advance warning will permit emergency shutdown in case of violation. And finally, there are the towers from which regular samplings of argon gas are made. Heavy concentration of the gas can result in a dangerous level of radioactivity. Once inside, each test article will be mounted on a railroad car and delivered to the hot cell mock-up for disassembly and reassembly as required by the test. It's necessary to prove that assembly work on the article can be done with manipulators since after irradiation, this will be the only means of handling the material. Personnel and equipment are kept active, both in the interest of personnel training and maintaining the equipment in sharp order. Most of the assignments will require a sense of certainty and the precise handling that only constant practice can produce. The use of these artificial hands requires as much skill in restoring tools to their proper place as it does to perform the job in the beginning. Before operations begin, the hot cells are undergoing a rigid checkout for possible radiation leaks. The thousand Curie source travels in both lateral and vertical patterns so that all surfaces of the cells are exposed. Outside, a detector follows each movement meticulously. Nothing can be left to chance as all test articles will come to the hot cells after irradiation.